Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time for, of course, what we call cruising with the case handler. As we give you the vibe, a little vibe right now, right here on 93.5 WVIP. And of course, it's good. Yeah, baby. It's Thursday. It's throwback Thursday. But more importantly, somebody's about to get the ass kicked. Right, Alan? I got an attorney on. His name is Alan E.K. Who's about to get their ass kicked? I will let you know that, but you, um, the maestro was all on also, not just me. Conrad is on, too. I, I know he's on, but it, but but he's, I think he stepped away for a second because his video is down. But I, I just wanted to know, you know, who's about to get their butt kicked today um, and I, I, between the in the debate? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Well, we're hoping that uh, Trump is going to flounder <laughs> as usual listen it's gonna be it, it, it's gonna be more than that man it it, it is yeah. I, I think he's gonna come hard but I, I know Biden is prepared for this one yep. you know yep. I, I believe that he's truly really ready for the debate tonight and yeah and I, I know we're gonna see a lot where that is concerned you know if they can mute Trump he can't yell and scream and interrupt Biden as he had did the last time. Okay, I hear you. All right, um, where is where is Conrad? Uh, he he must have just stepped away. Stepped away, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's just get the show on the road right now. It's uh, twenty seven minutes before the hour of uh, ten o'clock. It's a Thursday. The final debate, the showdown is tonight between uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. All right, and um, I say vote Biden, and I'm saying it again. With that said. Cruising with a case handler. Today's show is about immigration, and I do have the immigration attorneys here. The firm is Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. The managing partner, Conrad Pollock, will be on shortly. And I want for you all to, of course, tune in, turn up your radios. If you've got questions, feel free to call 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. You'll get a 100% free phone consultation. I guarantee that. And I got to say thanks to Conrad and the entire team and family over at PPID for making that happen. All right. So um, let's jump right into it. Immigration. Um, Alan E.K. has been at the firm for eons. OK. And he can answer just about any immigration question. Uh, Conrad Pollock, never been stumped, always challenges um, Alan with those questions. And also you can place your uh, questions on our Facebook pages. The firm's page, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. This show is about the firm that can help you in so many different areas. So the firm's page is Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. Just type in PPID Law, and it will pop up on Facebook or anywhere on the Internet, all right? And my page is David Squeeze Anarchy. You can also go to the Case Handler page, and you can watch us on Facebook. You can see what the attorneys look like right now. I don't want to ask Alan something about his physical well-being, but I will leave that off air. All right. But let me just welcome Mr. Pollock. How you doing? Got to unmute there. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. It's good to have you here. What's going on? Oh, it's good to be here. Um, same old, you know, just uh, working hard. You know, we've been really busy and uh, getting a lot of phone calls from the show. And um, people, uh, everybody's wondering what's going to happen in, what, 12 days? So yeah. that's, that's the question of... Uh, that's the question of the times. Uh, basically, you know, I want to apply for my wife. Uh, am I going to be able to do it after election day if Trump is elected? Uh, it, are things going to be better if Biden gets elected? Um, you know, that's that is the most common question we get uh, these days. So hopefully, uh, we'll have a satisfactory answer in a couple of weeks. Um, of course, as I've been saying all along, um, Joe Biden, if you're a pro-immigrant. Uh, for immigration in the United States, in favor of immigration to the United States, Joe Biden is your man. Uh, I encourage anybody who's interested or curious, just go to Google, Google uh, Joe Biden's immigration platform, and you'll see. And in fact, there was an article yesterday, Alan, you're going to probably bring this up. I don't want to steal your thunder, but there was an article yesterday that we were, that was distributed all, all over our firm about how Joe Biden has already pledged to bring the immigration system back to the way it was under Obama, which was a sane immigration program. Um, and Alan, I mean, I'll let you elaborate on that a little bit. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we're ready to go. 
It's all right. Go ahead, Al. Uh, once no. If you're just joining us, this is Cruising with a Case Adler show on immigration today. You just heard the managing partner of the firm, Conrad Pollock. Now, Alan E.K., one of the most experienced, if not the most experienced when it comes to immigration in this hemisphere, is about to speak on a few things. Bring us up to date with the immigration news, Alan. Okay, let's start off by talking about voting. Naturalized citizens will make up 10% of the voting population in the 2020 election. But historically, these new citizens have been less likely to vote than those who were born here. Only about half of those people who could have been voting. So it's really important that if you're a naturalized US citizen, you vote in this election because this is gonna be one of the most significant elections in our history, uh, in our lifetime. And it will determine the course and fate of our democracy itself and could also alter, for better or worse, the fate and circumstances of you and your families, friends, employers, and communities. So <clears throat> don't be intimidated. <clears throat> Get out and vote. We will, if you have any questions about the voting, we will be happy to help you with that. So again, make sure you're registered to vote. Number one, cast your ballot. Number two, vote early in person or vote absentee ballot or show up on election day and get out and vote. This is one of the most important elections in our lifetime. So, oh, and also, Alan, if I can interrupt, in New York, uh, polls open tomorrow. I'm sorry, on Saturday. Um, so if you want to vote early in New York, uh, Saturday is the day. I believe it's, yeah. from, uh, it's from Saturday the 24th until... Uh, November 1st, I think. That sounds right. So get out and vote, uh, get your family out, uh, make a plan to vote. It's really important that you vote it's in really this important. Important other election in our lifetime. Okay, now let's talk about- And then when, and you, and when that comes from the general talking about lifetimes, I mean, we're talking like the past hundred years here. So this is a really important election. All right, so we're, uh, if you have any questions about how to vote, where definitely, to vote, definitely. get in touch All with us. Right. Proceed, proceed, <laughs> proceed. Get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help you. If you have any questions about voting, where to vote, get in touch with us. We're always there. Okay, now on the last program, so we talked about something very significant. Um, and <clears throat> basically now, undocumented immigrants anywhere in the United States can be deported as quickly as one day. This is a change because <clears throat> it had been that if they found you within 100 miles of the border and within two weeks of entering the United States, they could deport you. But now anywhere in the United States, if you cannot immediately prove upon an encounter with an immigration official that you've been continuously in the United States for at least two years or have legal standards, they can take you right out. So this is a new uh, enforcement tool that they're using um, and very significant. And the thing is, this ICE has never had this kind of power before. Uh, and the uh, American Immigration Council said there are a lot of significant concerns about whether an agency like ICE who's never had this authority before can be trusted to establish appropriate safeguards. And a former senior, senior USDA Department of Homeland Security official basically said that expedited removal, which is what will happen if they find you and you're undocumented and you can't prove it right away, you'll have little opportunity to challenge this before you're put on, being put on a plane to go home. And this former immigration official said, it's virtually impossible. It's really, really easy, he said, to be removing individuals who are not legally eligible to be removed on the, via this expedited removal, which is what it's called. Uh, and ICE could deport thousands of people under this new rule, this man said, who used to work for USCIS. So we talked about this on the last program. This is very significant. So if you're undocumented, um, 
it's important that you see a lawyer call PPID. We'll be happy to talk to you about it. But remember, if they find you, you could be on a plane right away. Ex called expedited removal. No hearing unless you can show really quickly. So it's a very significant development. Uh, so we're, we're available to help you, but don't wait until they grab you because it may be too late. Okay, now let's talk, let me give you some numbers. The United States has the largest immigration system in the world. Five to 10 million non-immigrants come to the United States every year. 50, 500,000 to 1 million immigrants every year. 140,000 of those, 5 to 100,000 to 1 million, are employment based immigrants. Okay, 65,000 people per year go through the naturalization process. Uh, now, also, DACA, there are 650,000 undocumented immigrants who are on DACA. And obviously, if Trump is going to get reelected, they're on the way out. And hopefully, it's another reason why you've got to vote for Biden and not Trump. Absolutely. Since yeah, Trump let me just interject and let people know what, what it is that's happening right here. It's 17 minutes before the hour of 10 o'clock. This is Cruising with the Case Sandler, a show that is brought to you by the law firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. Um, it is a full service law firm and probably the most experienced, astute gentlemen are here with me today and of course they are talking on immigration today you're listening to alan ek i'm going to let him comment on one more thing and then we're going to jump into some questions and then come back to him later on but everyone that's out there listening and the information that he has given um listen it is extremely important that you speak with an attorney all right if you're out of status find out if they can do something for you and you can simply do that by actually calling them and getting yourself a free phone consultation and you can call them now you got to schedule it, of course, with an attorney. You can call them now at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. 844-774-3529. Just call before 10 a.m. and schedule that phone consultation with one of the attorneys. The phone consultation is absolutely free. Just make the link, make the call, 844-774-3529. Yeah, Alan, I'll let you... Um, finish that up and then we're going to jump to some questions and then come back to you later on. Okay, fine. Just one more thing. Since Trump has come in, there's been a 41% increase in the number of undocumented immigrants arrested by DHS. So we're talking about the changes that will come if Biden gets in and if Trump gets re gets reelected, you're going to see more than 41 41% undocumented immigrants arrested by DHS. So I have more, but I'll uh, stop here and pick up later in a near few, very new, near future. Absolutely. That's Alan E.K., one of the uh, proficient, competent attorneys at the firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSeco, PPID. Ladies and gentlemen, get your questions in right now, 844-774-3529, or go to my uh, Facebook page, David Squeeze Anarchy, or the firm's page, PPID, or the Case Handler's page, and place your questions in the comments section. I want to say thanks to Tracy Spence and the rest of the marketing team pumping those questions. Also from, of course, WhatsApp over to me right now. Getting to the questions now, but before we do that, Let's welcome a Jamaica. I mean, not a Jamaican, uh, Nelson Madrid. All right, all right. How are you doing, Nelson? I'm just busting it. Good job. morning. Good morning. I, I I thought I was disinvited to the meeting. I couldn't get on. I couldn't, couldn't sign it? in. Yeah, I couldn't get in. Sorry, man. That was kind of. So I thought I was. Uh, I thought I was disinvited. Listen, you know, I heard Alan speaking about all of these obvious uh, significant changes, but there are also good things happening. You know, immigration has reopened. They are interviewing people. They are processing applications. They are scheduling people for interviews. Um, so, you know, it's business as usual. Um, you know, obviously you have to move forward. You know, you can't stay back or look back. Um, you know, in fact, uh, Again, we've gotten several clients uh, scheduled for some citizenship interviews. Uh, there's pending adjustment of status interviews. Um, so immigration is open for business and uh, cases are proceeding. So anyone that's out there that would like to see you in person, Nelson Madrid, AKA the Maverick, an attorney at PPID, and would like to actually um, have you, you know, accompany them to like their immigration interviews, you are for hire as an attorney, right? 
Correct. Um, actually, and I think I may have said this before, you know, immigration law is federal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not uncommon for me to go to Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Texas. Uh, in fact, I got a case coming up in North Carolina. Um, you know, if you are admitted in the state of New York, you can actually practice in all 50 states. Why is it so important for an attorney to actually show up with a client or show up with an individual who's seeing an immigration officer? Why is it so important for an attorney to actually go? I mean, I, I, when I got my, when I got my citizenship, I actually showed up with an attorney because I had, um, arrest for speeding my ass off all the time. And I didn't want any questions popping up that I couldn't handle. So I showed up with an attorney. Why don't you expound a little bit, um, Nelson, why it is that anyone that's going to be sitting in front of any uh, Department of Homeland Security employee, show it, they, should, they should show up with, a, with an attorney. Why do you think that? You know, I, th I think it's important because obviously you want to protect your rights. Mm -hmm. You know, also, you know, unfortunately, some of these officers are new and don't really know what they're doing. So you're basically at the mercy of someone who may be new, does not have experience, and it's basically the blind leading the blind. When you go with an attorney, you know, one of the things I typically tell my clients is I will not speak unless they ask you a question I feel is inappropriate, a question that I don't believe you have to answer. And if that happens, I will interject and obviously you know, tell the officer, I don't believe you have to answer the question. And if need be, I can also escalate that to a supervisor. You know, when you go alone, again, you're at the mercy of this officer. You're going to feel compelled to do whatever it is he asks you to do. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, we represented a couple um, who filed a family-based adjustment of status you know, they thought because they were a couple, they could go to the interview by themselves. They had nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. Long story short, after the interview, they called us because the officer basically accused them of marriage fraud, completely mm -hmm. unfounded, by the way, right. and said, either you withdraw the petition or we will have you arrested and deport your husband. So what did this person do? Oh, my God. She withdrew the petition. So she came back. Conrad, I don't know if you remember, um, and we had to refile. And this time, obviously, they chose to go with a lawyer, right? Because, you know, a lot of people feel that you as the lawyer want to go because it's a way to charge the client more money. Mm -hmm. You know, my belief is you've invested so much time and money up to this point. Why risk it? Why go alone? You know, Adam spoke about this before, you know, how he had a leak and how he had water all over the house because he's not a plumber. Same concept. You know, it's great to play lawyer, but when you realize that you're not as knowledgeable as a lawyer is, you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. And now it's going to cost a lot more money to fix uh, something that should have been addressed initially. Absolutely. Uh, once again, folks, you're listening to an attorney, Nelson Madrid, a.k.a. the Maverick, because of how good he is. All right. And I'm disclaiming that um, if you're going to file your case, one, I believe you should actually use PPID, the law firm that makes sense to handle it. Two, if you're going to see an immigration officer or immigration personnel, I believe that you should go with Nelson Madrid or one of the attorneys at PPID. Right now, three. You can call them and get yourself a free phone consultation. Just schedule one with one of the attorneys, even the one that you're listening to, Nelson or Conrad, all right, or Alan, or of course, Andrea, all right, any of the attorneys there. The number to call right this second before 10 o'clock is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. We, most of us immigrants, come from a background where we believe that we can do everything ourselves and we can get it done ourselves especially for the mere fact that we know that John Tom down the road, he did it and he got through. All right. You know, there's a saying, puss and dog don't have the same luck. All right. I don't know if you guys, your attorneys understand what I'm saying. Of course, puss, puss and dog, dog, dog do not have, don't the, have same the same luck. luck. So go with the professionals, especially in this time of mankind with so many things happening on the, the presidency that is there right now. And even without that, even if it's Joe Biden, I still think that you should go with an attorney. You are dealing with immigration, all right? It is a minefield, as the managing partner Conrad says. 
Now, Conrad, I need for you to expand on what it is that Nelson and I was just spoke about, all right, about, you know, an attorney showing up with an individual if they're seeing an immigration personnel. What do you personally think? Well, clearly, uh, Nelson has been working in my firm for what, 15 years now, Nelson, or going on 13 years or 14? Yeah, going on like 14, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I hate to, to brag or take credit for things that, uh, that I've done, but you know, Nelson, everything that Nelson says, everything that Nelson has learned, he learned it right here, you know? Uh, so, 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 and of course, and the same could be said as we go up the tree, you know, you could say, I learned a lot of what I know from uh, Mr. K, you know, that's, that's how it works, you know, in terms of how long you've been in the field. But uh, Nelson and I tend to agree on most things immigration related. And um, the fact is, uh, if you go alone to an interview, uh, you know, who knows what can happen? My experience is that when clients, or I should say, when people walk into the immigration service alone, unaccompanied by an attorney, the examiners, basically, that's, tell, that's telling the examiners they've got carte blanche. They can do whatever they want, say whatever they, whatever they want, and there's nothing that the client, that, that the applicant can do. You know, we've heard, Nelson, Alan, how many times have we heard from clients after the interview, oh, well, they asked me, you know, when was the last time my, my, my wife and I had sex? I'm not supposed to ask questions like that. You know, you go in with a lawyer, they're not going to ask you a question They're not like going that. to do that. You know, so you just never know. You know, you know oh, of course not. Of course not. But you just never know what's going to happen, you know, if you walk in without a lawyer. And I'm just giving you, gi giving very basic examples here. You know, if it's a complicated case, you know, it's not going to go well. You, I mean, or clearly, it's not going to go as well as, you, as, if, as if you walked in with an attorney as opposed to walking, with, walking in without one. You know, that's just, that's just a fact. And as Nelson said, you know, oh, yeah, my neighbor did it. You know, you don't need a lawyer. Uh, you know, my friends have done this same type. They had exactly the same case, same facts, same everything. And they got through without a lawyer. They didn't need to spend the money. I don't know how many times I've heard that story. Yeah. You know, we've all heard that so many times. And, you know, in the past, there might have been a semblance of truth to that. But these days, the way immigration is, as much of a minefield as the immigration field has become, you walk in without a lawyer, and you're basically taking your life in your own hands. That's true. You know, that's that's a fact. There you go. And that's, of course, Conrad Pollock, ladies and gentlemen, you know, expanding and expounding on what it is that Nelson um, Madrid said, um, yeah, another attorney at the firm, about showing up at, you know, your interviews or showing up at immigration by yourself. Once again, the show, Cruising with a Case Adler, each and every single weekday, 9.30 a.m. It's brought to you by the law firm, PPID, and, of course, Everyone out there, if you want to speak with an attorney for free where a consultation is concerned, a phone consultation, call now and schedule that consultation before 10. You still got time. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Before we get to questions, and remember, you can follow us on Facebook, David Squeeze Anarchy. You can follow us at Case Handler. You can follow us at PPID. All right. You know. Um, let's just, I want to hear what, um, Alan has to say on the same thing, Nelson and, and, and Conrad, what do you, what do you, what do you think, um, Alan? I mean, I, I remember, um, Nelson saying that he actually showed up with you, um, to court one day and everybody was like giving you praises based on how much depth and experience that you have. I know Conrad jokes about it all the time that you've been with the firm for a hundred years, you know, it's showing in your face now. All right. <laughs> you know, very, very quickly, actually, before before the general answers that question, the general picks who he wants to handle some of his cases, obviously, based on the complexity of the case. Right. So the general puts in requests and says specifically, you know, I want Nelson to handle this case. I want ye to handle this case so he can. Alan, feel free to chime in. Alan, you are the general, Mr. Alan E.K. Your comment before we go to the top of the hour. You got two minutes. Okay, I just want to give a, a couple of comments about removal proceedings, which is what Nelson does a lot of. And we have a broken immigration court system. We have 1.7 million removal cases pending. And we have only 560 immigration judges, which means that each immigration judge has 2,000 cases per year to try to handle. They're not going to be able to do that. And that's why they keep pushing back the dates. And so if you have a removal proceeding and it's non-detained and you don't have a date, 
It's now pushed back to November 6, 2020. They just keep pushing the date back and pushing the date back. So when you have a removal proceeding and you don't have a specific date and it's non-detained, they keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So we've got a big problem in terms of our broken immigration court system. Thank you. Nelson can tell you about that. because well, Alan, Alan, the question was, you know, how do you feel? Why is it important for a client to appear at immigration or at immigration court with a lawyer? Why is that important? 60 seconds. You don't want to show up without a lawyer because then they can ride roughshod all over you. And you're not going to know enough to say, I want to talk to a supervisor. I don't like the questions they're asking. You want to have a lawyer with you who can help you answer the questions. And if you, they ask you a question and you don't know the answer to, you can say to the interviewer, I want to talk to my lawyer. Can I go out in the hall and talk to my lawyer? Or can you go out in the hall and let me sit here? And so you have a right at a hearing if your lawyer's with you to talk to your lawyer and stop the hearing. So you can go out in the hall or the, or the officer can go out in the hall. It's really important not to go by yourself. And as Nelson said, some of these people have very little, not very much training, and they can run, run roughshod over you if you don't have a lawyer with you. And they would never be able to ask a question like, when did you last have sex? Not if a lawyer is there. Nelson, you know, you know, also another, another good example, 245I, right? Um, if you filed the petition or application or the labor cert prior to a certain date, you don't have to prove physical presence. That is something a lot of immigration officers struggle with. They don't know. So immediately when they think somebody's on the 245I, they ask, for phys where's the proof of physical presence? In fact, if the labor cert was filed prior to a certain date, no proof of physical presence is required, you know? And again, this is something, if the officer doesn't know, you as a lay person are not gonna know. You need a lawyer there to obviously interject on your behalf. Okay. All right, gentlemen, um, we're going to the top of the hour. We're gonna be concluding our show on 93.5 FM. We'll do this again tomorrow morning at 9.30. Um, remember everybody, go out and vote. It's extremely important that you understand that. Go out and vote. Check out the debate tonight. I am going to see somebody get their ass kicked, and that's the orange guy. But with that said, do remember, prior results do not guarantee similar outcome. It's been an attorney advertisement brought to you by PPID. Book your consultations right now over the phone and schedule them with an attorney. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Seven seven four three five two nine. Make the link, make the connection, make it PPID, and don't forget for personal injury, same number eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four PPID L A W. Have yourself an amazing day. All right, gentlemen, time for us to continue on Facebook with questions. All right, uh, before I jump into the questions, any comments, anyone? Before jumping into it, jump into it because a lot of people have been waiting here. I guess done. All right, let's jump right into it. It's the immigration um, question segment now, ladies and gentlemen. So let's just get the questions going. The attorneys are here on Cruising with a Case Handler. Today's show is on immigration. We've got Nelson Madrid. We call him the Maverick. We've got Conrad Pollock. Okay, we call him the Maestro, the managing partner. And we got Alan E.K. We call him the General because of his experience and his depth. All right. Um, question one. I have found a new joint sponsor as requested from the embassy on my 221G sheet. What form and what documents should my joint sponsor send into the embassy? My husband did the interview. He just needs a new joint sponsor since they denied the original joint sponsor we had. Well, why? first of all, we would want to find out why they denied the original joint sponsor, whether he didn't have enough money, whether they didn't think he was a close enough relative. I'm sorry. And just to interject right quickly, Alan, you know, we have seen, Conrad, and you know this, we've seen many cases recently where the joint sponsor does have enough income. And for whatever reason, they send a letter saying there's not enough income. The guy makes $100,000. What do you mean it's not enough income? Mm -hmm. You know, so again, right, you take the denial, you think what they're saying is a fact, and you don't contest it, you don't are, now you're looking for a joint sponsor. You should have a lawyer look at that and make sure that that is yes. a correct decision. Yes, right. No, oh, just because immigration or the consular post says something doesn't make it so. They make mistakes. Gotcha. Believe me, they make many mistakes. 
And this is this is a new thing now where they're starting to ask, why is this joint sponsor doing this? What's the relationship right. between you and the and the joint sponsor? Uh, and so they want some kind of proof that he's not just a, a a friend that you pulled in off the street. And this is coming up more and more now. But basically, what you want to do is you want to put in an affidavit of support by the joint sponsor with his uh, financial uh, material also to show them, the consulate, that the joint sponsor has enough income. It's called an I-134. It's an affidavit of support. Or you just want to call PPID and let them handle it. That's what I would do. So once again, folks, the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPID-LAW. Schedule that phone consultation with one of the attorneys now. Let's move to the next question here on Cruising with a Case Handler, the show on immigration today. This is my case. I am an F1 category, priority date 8-14-2014. I am from Cuba. I would like to know the dates of the interviews in this category. Since my country, since in my country there is no embassy and we have to go to Guyana, we are very late. Please, guys, if you could tell me why, I would be very grateful. Alan, do you have the State Department uh, bulletin handy? I will find it. I've got it. You know, first of all, F. One is a first preference category, meaning that uh, this person is the adult son or daughter of a U.S. citizen. Uh, and when he talks about a priority date, that means the filing date of his I-130 visa petition. That's when he began the process. That's the date that determines uh, when he'll have a final interview. Um, there's a waiting list as a, because of a quota. In each of these visa categories, there's a quota for him to get his green card. Um, he also has an additional problem uh, in that he's subject to the ban. Um, even if his priority date is current today, First preference cases are subject to Trump's travel ban, and that travel ban currently is in, in effect until the end of this year. Uh, I would say to this person, if he has any relatives here in the United States, like his U.S. citizen mom, vote and vote against Trump. Because if Biden gets elected, that travel ban will go away. All right, And then whenever this person whose priority date is current, he'll be able to finish his case. <laughs> but Alan, yeah, Alan is looking for the Visa Department bulletin, uh, the U.S. State Department bulletin, there's a, a, every month the State Department publishes this visa bulletin, which gives the dates of each of these visa categories, telling people when their case is ready to roll. You could uh, go to Alan, visa, you, have, uh, visa you could actually Google visa bulletin October 2020, and it'll come up and you can see it right there. There you yep. go. That's, that's a clean. And every, every month it comes out. The new one's coming out next month, next week. The new one will be coming out between now and Monday. Okay. Right. All right. So there you have it. What that question? Once again, folks, eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Make sure you make that link eight five eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. All right. Here's another one. My husband is a green card holder and plans to sponsor me and our kids to the U.S. We are naturalized Canadians. My husband is working in the U.S. and files to the U.S flies to the U.S. every other week, but is in Canada since February 2020 due to COVID. And I just gave birth from a high-risk pregnancy. He is still employed in a U.S. company and working remotely now. I believe we need to apply Montreal. We are, we are from Alberta, Canada. Would this cause any problem once we apply for F2A? Would what cause any problem? I don't know. I guess evidently the filing that they're doing. It's, it's still it's, not. Uh, no, it's just standard case. It doesn't matter where they're from. Okay. All right. Pretty straightforward. All right. But but you, 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 but again but again there I believe they're I, I believe they're subject to the travel ban. Nelson, I, I mean permanent residence uh, F two A. I believe they're subject to the travel ban still. You're muted, Nelson. You're muted. They could start the case. They're not. I mean, yeah. that's going to take some time anyway. Yep. F two A category for this month, by the way, that's a spouse of a permanent resident or a minor child of a permanent resident. Um, and then, <clears throat> by the way, you only need one application. The visa petition is submitted by the spouse for the for the for the spouse and the accompanying children. If they're under twenty one, can just accompany on the same case, same petition. So they don't need separate petitions for that. Um, but the priority date for F two A October is current. So. That means if it stays current, a case like that can be done within a year, year and a half, assuming that there's no more travel ban, because they are subject to the travel ban. 
Okay, great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're joining us, it's the Immigration Show. It's the Immigration Link. It's Cruising with the Case Adler. And once again, it's brought to you by PPID. This has been great. And can you imagine we all started literally in the whole pandemic era doing this show? And here we are today answering your questions. Got a final question here. It says, I need the best of advice. I petitioned for my parents, um, the I-130 in 2019. My dad was approved and for RFE. They asked for voluntary DNA tests for my mom and went ahead to do. Now, I'm, once again, guys, I'm reading it as I, as I get it. Now, all offices are closed and cases still hung there. Will USCIS approve my case? I went ahead to provide more evidence as well. I need advice. Don't know what to do now. Wait, that, that's interesting. They asked for DNA evidence between the, 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 the child and the mother and not the father. Yeah. They asked that, for that, voluntary, voluntary DNA test for mom and went ahead to do. That's that's unusual. Usually, they ask about the father, not the mother, um, because they're questioning the, they're questioning whether the relationship actually exists. Yeah, you know, that's that's impossible to answer like this. We would need to see documentation. We need to see what immigration was asking, and we would need to see what kind of documentation. Well, they have although Look, we, you get a DNA test done, you get a DNA test done. It's going to say ninety nine point nine percent chance that there's a there is an existing relationship. I don't know if they have the DNA test, what it says. Fact is, though, immigration is open. If you submitted everything in, turn, in, in time on the RFE uh, and immigration is satisfied with the response, they'll issue an approval. It's that simple. There's no delay on that. All, I mean, we had a case recently where they were questioning the relationship between mother and child. And what we did in that case is similar to this case, they requested voluntary DNA um, but the DNA center was closed and we actually wrote to immigration and informed them as a result of the pandemic, you know, the DNA center is closed. Can we please have an extension? And we received an extension in that case. So that's another option. All right. Okay, but you know, they approved, they approved the father's case though, not the mother's case. That's very unusual. Right, right. Usually it's the other way around. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cruising with a Case Adler. Now, listen, we're, we're going to conclude the show, but I want everyone to understand this. Listen, this show is here. We do the show every single weekday, 9.30, and 98% of the time, we are live. All right? Take advantage of the show. Call one of these attorneys. You have heard them speak. You know their experience. The firm has been around for 60 years. Okay, just as long as some of the attorneys are here. All right. You've got the Conrad Pollocks. You've got the Nelson Madrid. You've got the Alan E.K. You've got the Andreas. I could go on. The Alexandra Bondakoff. All right. I could go on. Great firm. Yes, in the capacity of immigration. Right now, call them. Schedule that phone consultation with one of the attorneys. The number is 844-774-3529. Also, share the link that you're watching with other people out there so that they can actually watch the show. And maybe they'll hear their question and get an answer for it. Also would like to remind you that personal injury is another department at the firm. It's, it's ran by Adam Handler. We call him the case handler because of how good he is at settling your accident cases. And he has already settled well over $125 billion worth of cases in his career. Make sure you reach out to the firm, 844-774-3529. Before I go, gentlemen, anything else that you'd like to say? Yeah, I wanted to mention, you mentioned Alexandra. She's going to be on the show tomorrow talking about students and student visas and what's going on with that because there have been a lot of changes. So she's what about, coming on tomorrow morning to discuss What about later? Uh, we'll be back later on. Alex won't be there, but we'll all be back. Okay, all right. So we'll be back what, later What time on. are we doing that again tonight? 6.30. 6.30. Yeah. So, so everyone can shoot in. Yes, Alan, quickly. One, one quick one. The new fees that were supposed to go into effect October 2nd, Raising mm -hmm. the immigration fees. Lean back, lean back a little, Alan. Step the new fee yeah. was supposed to go into effect October 2nd, significantly raising a lot of the filing fees, have been held up by a court case. And so naturalization fees are still 725 instead of the 83% hike it was going to be. So you can still file under the old filing fees while the court is holding it up. Okay, that's Alan E.K. Gonna call him the information man, all right? 
He gives a lot of information, all right? Long-winded, but of course, knowledgeable and very important. It has been a great show, gentlemen, and thank you all so much for doing what it is that you do. You didn't have to, but you are doing it in helping people. Yes, Nelson? No, just stretching. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Alan. We'll catch up sure. later on. Same, same bat station, 6.30 on the p.m. today. The debate comes afterwards, and I'm quite sure Conrad is ready to watch that. You know, nothing could stop him from seeing that. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll be. I'm sure we'll be texting either during or after the debate. Did you really hear that? Did he just say that? <laughs> oh man. Anyway, let's see what happens tonight. It's going to be a real showdown, and uh, I'm quite sure Conrad probably will be watching it on that Animal Network, the one that's you know, you know. People, you know, the animal I network, like, you know. I like I like watching on I like watching on Fox News. I like watching yeah, Fox News after the debate just to hear their take, you know, because of course Trump's gonna win. Trump won, he's a he's a he's a warrior, he's a gladiator, he's the guy, you know, he's gonna slay the dragon. You know, he, he's the guy. Regardless, regardless. They already have the script written out before the show even begins. I'm looking forward towards uh tomorrow morning's show. <laughs> that's the show I'm looking for that we do here anyway gentlemen thank you so much for being a sport and of course being professionals we do appreciate you um, ladies and gentlemen have yourself an amazing Thursday we appreciate you also remember to reach out to the firm 844-774-3529 or visit them online just type in PPID law it will all pop up and don't forget accident cases Adam Handler that's personal injury 844-774-3529 or thecasehandler.com thank you and have a great day